So welcome back and in continuing with our solar series on the channel today, we're going to do some DC wiring and specifically we're going to go over a PV combiner box, what it is, why it's important and why you probably need one for your solar system. Now I'm going to go ahead and apologize. It's really bright outside where we're going to be installing this, but we will get you some good shots a little later. We're going to go through the full installation process, but you can take a peek inside here. We're going to explain all these components and why I chose to go with one of these for our solar setup. So let me show you what all I got going on here. We currently have one 1200 watt solar array. We're about to build a second one right here. So I bought a big enough combiner box that would handle two strings, two separate solar arrays. It'll actually handle four strings because we may do some additional add-ons in the future. So on the back side of this solar array, I have everything wired up. We have videos on that down to one set of 10 gauge wire that comes down this post right here. I'm about to cut and take this 10 gauge wire coming from this solar array into this combiner box on my first string right here. And ultimately, long story short, what we're accomplishing with this box is not only do we get surge protection, heck, we're out here in Florida, lightning capital of the world, this is exposed. We're also going to get breakers and fuses. Then we'll output this wire right back into my shop, into that solar room. And we can change combinations out here, depending on what I'm testing and what I'm doing for wattage, voltage, and amperage. But we're fusing up, we're surge protecting, and we have a large breaker here. So let me go ahead and cut into this first string of wires, wire into the box, and I'll explain how all this works. No matter what combiner box you get, go ahead and check that all connections are nice and tight and constantly pull on them and wiggle them as you tighten them, especially with stranded wires and then re-tighten. After you wiggle around, typically you can re-tighten even more. But any new combiner box, make sure all connections are nice and tight. And I'll tell you in just a little bit why I specifically chose this one, even though it costs a little more over some other models, it's got a lot of nice features. Okay, so I have my wires coming here from my solar array, and you're gonna notice I'm not permanently mounting some of this stuff today, although I'm protecting stuff with a loom tube and all, because again, with me running a review channel and testing lots of different equipment, I need to be able to constantly unplug and change stuff up depending on, well, whatever I get my hands on but I need to put some MC4 connectors on the end of this wire that's now coming from the panel since I just cut it in half. I purchased some that are rated for up to 30 amps. Currently, I'm only running a 10 amp setup right here. So I need to strip this wire back, get these on, and you can plug in the bottom right here. You see we have four different fuses, four different MC4 connector sets. This is what's called a four string, up to four solar string connections right here. So this is pretty simple to do. You take one of your MC4 connectors. You can buy these in bulk off of Amazon and other places. Go ahead and put the twist on cap down the wire. And then take your connector. You need to make sure you look underneath side. I'm connecting positive right now. I looked on the underneath side and seeing what type of connector was on the positive side. It's this little pin style connector. So that means I need to use the female receiving end right here. It'll slide over that. So make sure you're crimping on the proper connector. And then I have a pair, a cheap pair of ratcheting connectors right here made just for crimping these. So we have all the different sizes there and I'm using the largest size. All right, so I'll just put that connector right over. I know y'all probably can't see this, but it's very self-explanatory. Don't crimp this on. We're good. Double check your connection. Now we can slide this end on that has that seal in it right over the connector you're going to push till it snaps now it can't pull back apart screw and tighten this together so we can press that little rubber seal i just showed you and make this waterproof now we can plug in red to red right here we'll do the same thing here for the black except i'll be using the ground style connector here and the opposite pin 
All right, so not to beat a dead horse here, but pay attention to the wire color going inside. Don't look back here at these little rubber seals that say, well, red, and think that's a positive. Exact opposite. Each end of a cable will always be exact opposite, depending on how you're receiving and sending back out. So pay attention to that with your solar panel cables. So let's do a quick recap. We have our wires coming in for our panels, and I have videos on the channel if you want to see how to wire panels in series and parallel and adjust your voltages and your amperage. But I have all these series and paralleled actually coming down this wire, and that comes into the input receiving side where these MC4 connectors are. They then go up into fuse holders. Take a look here. We have 15 amp fuses in here. Now something you need to understand about these PV combiner boxes, you'll see all on the internet, especially the cheap ones, they'll claim, oh, they're 60 amp boxes because look, you have four 15 amp fuses. You do not ever run 15 amps through 15 amp fuse. All it takes is just a little surge, a little spike and you've busted it. This box actually rates itself at 40 amps and properly so because you don't want to put no more than 10 amps of load, which is exactly what I have, through a 15 amp fuse. So that leaves you a little buffer. Well, there's a fuse in here, 15 amp, 15, 15, 15. We don't want to put more than 10 amps through. So look, I can put a 10 amp array here, a 10 amp array there. And long story short, I can run 40 amps through this. This also is properly sized wire for that. That's another thing you'll see with the super cheap boxes online. We have 10 gauge wire coming out, which can e that can handle up to 30 amps alone. And you'll see these wires are a little bigger. These are actually seven gauge wires right here, which can handle the 40 amps. So whenever I build my second array over here, which is coming up very soon, I'll plug in to another side right here. Run up through, these combine on a bus bar. That's another very important feature you need to look for on PV combiner boxes. The super cheap ones just have jumpers across the top and believe it or not, they'll actually use a wire that cannot handle the amperage rating that they claim that it can. It's very dangerous. So I spent a while looking to find a good box that was relatively affordable, although this one's a little more expensive, but had, well, bars up here. Nice features like this and properly sized wires. So we have our input coming in. You can do it to four strings up to 40 amps through, goes to this bar. And then that sends power over to a surge protector. That's something I wanted. You'll see the surge protector goes down to a bar here and we're actually about to run a copper wire from there out through this down to a grounding rod. And that grounding rod actually grounds, well, say lightning strike, excessive surge back to earth where it's nice and safe. And then that means it's not continuing to travel through your system through the wires that goes inside. We don't wanna bring that stuff inside of your structure. And then you'll see we have another wire that carries over, carries the main load to our breaker right here that we can throw off and on and that can actually trip. So we're fused and we have a throw off breaker. Wires come out of there, back down into the building. Ultimately, that's what goes to your equipment, whether that be a portable power station or most likely an on the wall inverter. But the surge, well, you see how it's green? It can take shock. And if you ever see that red, you need to replace this. It can take that extra excessive surge, whether it be from the grid or from lightning, protect your equipment and not actually continue to send on. It can send that down to ground to earth. You have breakers that can be uh, tripped here. You have fuses that can blow. So now you can see we're really protecting our system should something happen. As far as your grounds for the system, well, you plug your ground in, they go up to a main bar here and ultimately pass through the breaker right here. You do see one ground runs to your surge protector. So what does all of that mean? Why do we want this? Well, you're producing power here. There's current trying to come out of these connectors that I'm disconnected from right now. It's actually about 130 to 140 volts. So we're talking real power here. Should something short out on one of these metal frames, should something happen to one of these panels, well, you don't want to send that into what could potentially be a thousand or $2,000 inverter. I don't know what kind of setup that you have. So this box is mounted out here in between your power source and the receiver inside. And it is a means of protection should you get one of those crazy surges, that lightning strike. Should I fold this thing up and pinch a wire and now we're shorting out and crazy things are going on. I don't want to send that inside to my equipment. So this box has many means of protection. This box is also excellent for taking in multiple arrays and combining for you. You don't have to buy a bunch of splitters and everything else. And you can do some changing around here on what and how you plug in. It combines it nicely.
One other thing I want to mention about this box, I mean, this is thick, heavy duty powder coated metal. It has a really nice gasketed seal. It's made for the outdoors. It's got the door grounded properly in case something were ever short out in there. It can be locked. It's got a nice latch. I mean, it's a really nice box without going into a really big name brand expensive one, but this is a much better box than like the $80 junk ones that I'm seeing on Amazon. And I'll put a link down in the description for this one as well if you want to see that. All right, so let's take a look here. We now have our ground wire connected to the ground bar. It's looped around in there and pinched tight, run out the bottom, and run down to a ground rod. It does not hurt and often is recommended, especially in home wiring, to run a second ground rod at least a minimum of six to eight feet away and run another cup of wire over there. I also have the frame of this grounded as well. So typically solar panels have a spot to ground right here on each of them, but these solar panels are technically grounded to this frame. There is eight screws going through the brackets, through the frame itself, into this big steel frame that has multiple connection points everywhere, back to the main frame. So I have the main frame grounded. That is in case I ever have a short of this system to this metal frame. So it's got a direct path to earth and not to me if I were to come grab a hold of it. So now we can reconnect everything, flip the breaker on, and we have power back inside. All right, so disregard the mess I have in here. I've, this is all temporary and I'm taking in and out so much stuff. I wanna explain real quick what I'm doing. And by the way, there is a video on the channel showing a proper installation of this manual transfer switch. So long story short, you can see I'm pulling wires out of my breakers, wire nutting them to a black wire that has a letter on it. Let's just say C for example. See a C over here. And then you take the red wire that also has a C and put back into the breaker. So it's looping current from the grid back through this unit, back out and connecting the wire to what's running through the wall. That's when C is down on line or grid power. I can flip C to off, thus that loop of wire that's going back through, you're breaking it. And then you can flip up to generator power. So if I have a generator plugged in here, portable power station, whatever it may be, then you're actually taking power in from this plug and sending it back out one wire only, the black wire, for example, back to the wire nut to here. So this manual transfer switch creates a loop either from the grid or a straight tie-in from a generator, but not both at the same time. It's called a manual transfer switch. They have automatic versions. So for example, if you had a generator hooked up and you're pulling off a of grid power, you lose grid power, it automatically swaps over to whatever the input right here is. This one, I just have to manually flop the switches. So for people that's tying in solar, typically what you would do is mount a sub panel right here, pull your critical circuits out of here to the sub panel and power that sub panel with an inverter, a power station, things such as that. In a sense, that's what this is doing right here as well because we have run wires in from this instead of pulling wires out of here and tied in to where, well, we can run up to six circuits on either grid power or flop over to an inverter, a portable power station, anything else. I already have this. Now I do know down the road as we build this room out and go to 240 volt power, which is single phase, but it's often referred to as split phase, two 120s coming in. Well, this starts not being as compatible. Then we will mount an actual sub panel on the wall and have to physically start pulling wires out of this box over to that. That is only if I want to bring grid power into an inverter and then, well, send it back out. Obviously you're not gonna pull power in and send it back to the same panel. Now, if you just wanna run a solar inverter on the wall or portable power station and strictly run off of solar and not tied into grid, well, then I can back feed this panel, which I already have right here with a large breaker and well, I got a 50 amp generator box over here on the wall. I could mount one over here, or I could just back feed wires through the side of this into here, 
flip a breaker on because I'm not actually pulling power from this. That'll make a lot more sense down the road as we start really getting into some of this equipment. But I want to explain, I already have this, and this allows me to test small portable power stations I can put right in here up to large systems that'll do 30 amps of 240. As y'all seen, I just ventilated the room because I'm concerned about heat here in the future. I'm still looking for maybe a filter that can mount in the wall, but would be relatively small so I can pull in outside air through a filter and exhaust out of the top part of the room, heat rises. And I forgot to mention to everybody throughout this build, I did five eighths inch plywood on the walls. I did extra studs in the wall so I can really mount some heavy stuff on here. These batteries, these inverters, these things get really, really heavy as we start moving into on the wall stuff. So I've tried to overbuild this room and I did not skimp on, well, thickness of materials and really bracing out corners. All right, so I'm gonna use my Blue Eddy AC200 Max. This thing is 2200 watts out of this TT30 port. So the cool thing about this now, pretty much all my shop critical circuits are on these six circuits right now. I can start flipping them to off and then over to generator power. We'll hear this thing load up and we'll go check are all the lights running, the freezers, the refrigerators. Then we need to test the solar hookups that I have coming through the wall over here. All right, so let's test the shop lights. All right, they're on. I mean, there's 400 watts right there and I can turn on these high bay lights out there and we go to about 900 to 1000 watts. Super powerful work lights out there. We'll kick on my wall outlets, which has fans running. All right, fan just cut off. And then let's turn this room's fan and lights over to this as well. All right, so let's hook up our solar and let's go outside and turn that on. All right, so all we have to do now is turn that on and let's go make sure we're getting input. Now it's really late in the day. You can see the sun's all over here. I don't want to blind y'all. It's not even really on the panels well, but these panels have been working so well. I mean, look, look where the sun is. I guarantee you we're still getting some solar in on those. All right, let's see here. Okay, so that's what impresses me. 450 watts we're pulling in. It's bouncing around a little. And this is already later in the afternoon. The sun's off to the side and I don't even have those solar panels aimed correctly. So we're about to double them up. That would put us getting around 900 to 1000 watts this late in the afternoon and probably close to 2500 watts during the middle of the day. But we'll test all that stuff later. Long story short, hey, solar is working. My transfer switch is working. All the outlets and lights, everything else is working. So overall, this has been a heck of a fun build right here. I love building stuff like this. So now that the room is done, well, it's time to start running tests in here, putting bigger equipment in here and ultimately building it to what we want. So I've already got some cool stuff sitting out in the shop, a couple more pretty big reviews going, including some on the wall stuff that y'all have been requesting. And uh, we're gonna continue to test things. We're gonna continue to learn, share the knowledge, Again, that's what this room is all about. Hopefully you enjoyed this little build series here. Now all the fun testing begins. We'll catch you on the next video.